In this series of videos, we've been talking about bank reconciliations. In our previous video, we introduced the concept of what a bank reconciliation is. In this video, we're going to walk through an example of a bank reconciliation. If you'd like to download the problem for yourself, it's linked below in a Dropbox file. So if you just see a Dropbox link below the video box, click it and download it and you can have a Word version of this. If you're a professor and you'd like to use this problem in your class, feel free. You have my consent. As long as you're not profiting from it, I don't mind you're using and copying this uh, to your heart's content. So let's work through the problem. The problem says, Zipflyer Inc.'s cash to account for May shows the following information. And this is a very typical scenario, right? We have our company's cash T account. And there's our cash T account with debits to cash and credits to cash, debits being represented with deposits, credits, well, it seems like all checks here. And of course, if we take our debits minus our credits, we're left with $14,600 in cash. Terrific. Okay, so we've got our cash balance. Now, uh, at the same time, at the end of May, so that's our cash balance on May 31st. And at the end of May, our bank, of course, sends us a bank statement. And May's bank statement has balances and deposits and checks and other things going on. And at the end of May, we see that the bank thinks we have $16,700. This is a difference, right? This is over $2,000 different. This is more than 2K. So the fact that we're so far apart is not a problem, but we have to be able to explain those differences. And that's where this bank reconciliation comes in. So let's get to work on preparing a bank rec. So whenever we prepare any type of statement in accounting, we always start with a title, and this is no exception. The name of our company, as I recall, is Zipflyer Inc. So just like any other financial statement, we start with a three-line title, Zipflyer Inc. We're preparing a bank reconciliation, and then we date it, and it's May... 31st. If you'd like to give the year, you can, uh, but you, you don't have to. Uh, and so anyway, we're, we're ready to go with our bank reconciliation. Now, the bank reconciliation, oops, is a little bit like a balance sheet in that it's kind of got two halves that we're trying to balance. Uh, I'll encourage you on the left to say, here's what uh, the bank thinks our cash is, and here's why the bank's wrong. So We'll start with our balance per bank. And what do I mean by balance per bank? I mean the balance according to the bank statement. So the balance according to our bank statement was this 16707. So let's fill that in. Okay, so our balance according to our bank statement is $16,707. Uh, now we're going to list all of the reasons the bank missed the boat. So we're looking for things in our T account that don't exist on the bank statement. And that's uh, typically going to be outstanding checks and deposits in transit. So uh, 13846, and I just go down the line. So I go 13846, and I see it on the bank statement, 13846. So I cross it off. That's fine. If they match, that's fine, right? Bank reconciliations, we're worried about what's different, not what matches. Uh, the May 1st deposit for 1550. I do see a deposit for 1550. You might notice the dates are a little different. Well, there's a little lag, right? When the cash comes into my account, uh, when the cash comes into me, I don't always deposit it right away. So there's a, a one day lag. There's sometimes you'll see two and three day lags. With checks, you'll see weeks of lag between when we record it and when the bank records it. That's what causes outstanding checks and outstanding deposits. So another deposit here, 2,700 bucks, and I see it down there for 2,700. 4950, 4950, 2600, 2600, and as I continue, I see a couple of deposits on the bank statement that aren't on my books. I'm not worried about those yet. That's for the other part of my bank rec. I'm going to worry about, okay, here's the things the bank's recorded that I've missed. But right now I'm worried about what has the bank missed, and it appears they've missed this $3,000, right? They don't have it anywhere. We show a deposit of three grand. I don't see three grand anywhere on the bank statement, so. This is an outstanding deposit. 
Um, now, when the bank finds out about this three grand, we and it makes sense that it happened at the end of the month, right? We got the money come in at th uh, May 31st. We probably didn't get the bank with, with it till June. Uh, so there's $3,000 we've recorded, but the bank hasn't recorded yet. When the bank finds out about this, they're going to add it to my balance. They're going to say, oh, you get $3,000 more because of this check or this uh, deposit, rather. So we're going to add any deposit in transit. And that's what this is called. It's a deposit that hasn't yet arrived, and it was $3,000. Okay, continuing. Now let's look on the credit side of our T account. We just want to go down the list. So we've got a credit for 550, credit for 550, credit for 1256, credit for 1256, credit for 3684, credit for 3684, credit for uh sorry, 875 in our T account and there's check number 76 down there, 875, credit for 1100, check 79, yeah, check 79, 1100. 486, oh, oh, 486, I got to erase that. And I see 468 down there, and you can see it's check number, uh, check number 80, check number 80, and there's a little note about this one. It says the correct amount of check 80, a payment on account, a payment of an account payable is 468, zip flyers, bookkeeper made an error. Okay, so the bank got this right, right? The bank said 468, it was 468. We put it in as 486 because we just keyed it in wrong. So when I'm fixing my, my bank statement, I'm saying, well, here's all the stuff the bank missed. The bank didn't miss this one. This 468, uh, the bank is okay here. Now, I'm going to have to worry about this later because there is an error that needs fixing. But because it's not on the bank side of it, uh, the bank didn't screw up here. I don't put it on the bank side of the bank reconciliation, right? This is all stuff that the bank is missing that we're dealing with here. The bank didn't miss that check. So I'm not going to worry about it yet. Check uh, number 81 for 548. Uh, okay, I don't see that one, so that uh, is going to be an issue. Um, for 3058, that check is definitely cleared. 1244, check number 83, 1244. And that's it. So the last three, check 84, 85, 86, all look like they're outstanding. Maybe I'll circle these in red. These checks are outstanding, as is that one. Uh, they haven't appeared on the bank statement, and they're, they're not that, that special 486 one, 468 one we'll deal with in a few minutes, but these are all outstanding checks. So check 81, 84, 85, and 86. So we'll deduct any outstanding checks. I spell checks like a Canadian, C-H-E-Q-U-E-S. I know my American cousins spell it C-H-E-C-K-S, and that's fine. Um, okay, 81, 84, 85, 86. And the amounts were... Let's see. Oops, I got to go up a little higher. 548, 983, 68, 175. I'm not going to remember all those. 548, 983, 68, and 175. All right, I'm going to call up my calculator here. I know it won't appear on screen for you. But let me crunch these numbers. Oop. There we go. So 548 plus 983 plus 68 plus 175. Add them all up. I get 1774. That's my total outstanding checks. And when the bank learns about these checks, right? These are checks I've written. They haven't yet cleared the bank. When the bank learns about them, it's going to negatively impact my cash balance, right? Once those checks clear, that hurts my cash. So I put this in brackets to say, look, that's coming out of cash. So these are the things the bank has missed. This is called our reconciling 
balance. And what we're saying is, look, when the bank finds out about it, this is what they're going to think my cash account is. So 16707 plus 3000 minus 1774, I get 17933. Writing's a little bit messy there. Let me clean it up. 933. Okay, dollar sign at the top of each column and at the bottom line. So we've done the bank's half of this uh, bank rack. I think now would be a good time to pause our video and to break this into two parts. I intended to do it as one, but we'll do the second half of the bank rack in the next part of the video.